Herman Webster Mudgett, also known as H. H. Holmes, was one of the first serial killers on the loose in the city of Chicago, Illinois. It is believed that he has killed more than 200 people while only confessing to 27 of the murderers. The methods he used to kill people were something that others could look up to or be amazed by them. But first, let's go in depth behind Holmes' background on who he was. Holmes was born on May 16, 1861 in Gilmanton, New Hampshire. He enjoyed a privileged childhood and was said to be very intelligent at an early age. He was exposed to an interest in medicine, which is a grave indication to a haunting sign. It's even possible that he was responsible for the death of his friend. His life of crime soon started when he did frauds and scams. Holmes being a medical student at the University of Michigan, he would steal dead corpses and use them to make false insurance claims, possibly even using them to make experiments with. In 1885, Holmes had arrived at Chicago, Illinois. He found a pharmacy and soon began working there. He decided to take over the pharmacy and made an agreement with the owner. It is rumored that Holmes had killed the previous owner because she suddenly went missing. In front of the pharmacy that he owned, he built a three-story building that would soon be known as the Murder Castle. The upper floors had rooms where he would kill and torture his victims himself. There were also trapdoors that would send the bodies to the basement where he would burn the bodies or dispose the bodies. The hotel even had rooms that would lead to nowhere. Later on, in 1893, he opened a three-story home and turned it into a hotel. Holmes would put flyers throughout the city of Chicago and the flyers would say that Holmes was a wealthy man who was loyal and was looking for a wife. Holmes would marry women and kill them afterwards so that he can get their life insurance money. Other victims were lured there by the offer of employment. Sooner or later, they would be murdered. Holmes left Chicago shortly after the World's Fair to continue his schemes, including a plan with an associate named Benjamin Pitzel in which Pitzel would fake his death to collect $10,000 from a life insurance company. Jailed at one point for another fraud, Holmes confided in fellow inmate and notorious outlaw Marion Hedgepat about the life insurance scheme. Hedgepat later helped investigators by revealing details of their discussion. While the authorities eventually identified Howard as Holmes, they did not catch on soon enough to stop his final murders. Holmes killed Pitzel and after telling his widow that her husband was still alive and in hiding, he managed to convince her 
to let him travel with three of her five children, who soon became his victims. After several weeks of outrunning authorities, Holmes was finally apprehended in November 1894. During his time in custody, he gave numerous stories to the police, even admitting to killing 27 people. Convicted in 1895, Holmes appealed his case, but lost. H. H. Holmes died on May 7, 1896, when he was hanged for his murders. He was buried in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Even now, many people believe that Holmes managed to escape his sentence and was never caught. Holmes was a criminal mastermind and was the cause of many deaths in the name of money. It is still unknown on the exact amount of people killed by Holmes. God. Number 5. He stole cadavers H. H. and disfigured them for insurance money. Tragedy. In 1882, Holmes attended the University of Michigan's Department of Medicine and Surgery. While enrolled, he would frequently steal cadavers from the laboratory, disfigure the corpses, and try to pass them off as people who have died in accidents in order to collect the insurance money from policies he took out on the deceased peoples. He would eventually perfect this scam and use it against women who worked with him, but mysteriously died soon after. Number 4. His murder castle was a mystery to everyone except Holmes. In 1886, Dr. Henry Howard Holmes began to work at a local pharmacy owned by Elizabeth S. Holton. He took over the store when Miss Holton mysteriously disappeared, and soon afterwards, Holmes purchased a vacant lot across the street, where he proceeded to have a 162-foot-long hotel constructed. The Murder Castle, as it was eventually called, was built by several different contractors whom were frequently fired when Holmes feared they became too suspicious of what his intent for the hotel was. The castle's bottom floor consisted of his own drugstore and various other shops, while the top floor held his personal offices, as well as a labyrinth of rooms and doorways opening to brick walls, stairways leading to nowhere, and oddly angled hallways. Number 3. Holmes' murder rooms allowed him to kill without detection. When H. H. Holmes felt the urge to kill, he would use a variety of murder rooms in his castle to accomplish his goals. Most of the rooms were soundproof so that none of the patrons of the drugstore could hear the cries for help. One such room was a bedroom fitted with gas lines that would allow Holmes to asphyxiate his victims. Another room contained a secret hanging chamber where he could hang them. There was also a room that was completely sealed by brick that could only be entered via a trapdoor in the ceiling. Holmes would lock his victims in that room and leave them to rot. Additionally, Holmes also had a bank vault installed in his hotel where he would leave young women to perish. Number 2. Selling His Victims to Science After H.H. H. Holmes was done with his prey, he disposed of them via a secret metal chute or a dummy elevator which led to the basement. There, he and his assistant, Benjamin Pizel, would dissect some of the bodies, strip them of their flesh, and craft them into skeleton models that were later sold to medical schools. The other victims, however, were buried in lime pits, incinerated in giant furnaces, or put in barrels of corrosive acid. Number 1. He was captured because of a horse. In 1894, after being screwed out of a $500 payday from Holmes, his former cellmate and convicted train robber Marion Hedgepeth began talking to the authorities about Holmes' insurance scams. While the police didn't have enough evidence to arrest Holmes for the scam, they were able to track him to Boston and apprehend him on an outstanding horse theft warrant from Texas. Once in police custody, Holmes was terrified of going back to Texas for the horse theft, so he confessed to faking Benjamin Peitzel's death by using a cadaver from a nearby cemetery. 
but the story didn't hold up under scrutiny after the investigator confronted Holmes about the name of the cemetery and its location. H. H. Holmes was convicted for the murder of Benjamin Peitzel and eventually hung by the neck until dead on May 7, 1896 at the Philadelphia County Prison. 